Hey everybody, welcome back. Uh, welcome to the beginning of chapter 10, section 1, where we start to talk about cell division. Uh, by the end of this lesson, you should know these objectives, and you should be able to tell me these key terms. All right. Uh, so we got to talk about first cell division and why cell division happens. Okay. And there's two reasons that we're going to talk about. The first one is called information overload. Okay. And this refers that there's not enough DNA to give infinitely large cells directions on how to live. Right. Basically, cells need to divide because if they got so big, right, eventually they have tons and tons and tons of organelles and lots and lots of different processes for life going on, right? And all these different organelles, all these different processes have very specific uh, pieces of DNA, right, or codes of DNA that tell them how to live. So if cells got so big, right, they would need an infinite amount of DNA to give them this information on how to live, and that's just not possible. All right, so the first one is information overload. There's not enough DNA to give cells all the information they need to live. Right? Think about this like when you take way too many pictures of too many apps on your iPad, right? There's not enough space. There's not enough storage in the memory of your iPad. Same thing, right? If your cells got too big, just like you had too many apps and pictures and songs on your iPad, right? You wouldn't have enough storage. Okay? The second reason why cells need to divide is for exchanging materials. Okay, and at a certain point, cells cannot take in enough materials to allow them to live, to sustain themselves, as they get bigger and bigger. All right, and I like to think about this. Let's compare the two most different states in the country, right? Alaska and Rhode Island, where some of you guys are from, right? Rhode Island is so small, I'm going to take a guess, you could probably fit 50, 60 Rhode Islands in one Alaska. All right, and let's pretend for a minute here that in both Rhode Island and Alaska, right, uh, you could not get any resources from within the state. So let's say all your food, all your gasoline, all your electricity, all your water had to come from outside the state, right? In a place like Rhode Island, that wouldn't be too bad because all you have to do is go from right here, right, and move it into the middle, around here to here, right? Not too far to transport to come from outside the state because Rhode Island is so small. Take the biggest state like Alaska, Right? Imagine having to bring food from all the way over here in Canada, all the way over here, right? Or from here, all the way over in here, thousands of miles. It would be unrealistic to have a state this big if you couldn't bring, if you could only bring things in from the outside. All right? So basically, right, just like if a, think about this as a cell, if cells were to get so big, right, because cells need to take in energy and nutrients from the outside, right, they wouldn't be able to sustain themselves because that those nutrients, that stuff you're taking in, would have to come so far into the cell, right? Whereas in a little cell, right, it doesn't have to travel far to get all the way across the cell. All right, so again, this is called exchanging material. Okay, and, and the theory for this exchanging material is called the surface area to volume ratio, right? And this is really looking at two aspects of the cell. Let's pretend that a, one cell was this cube, right? We could have two aspects here. Surface area was to be to take if I took the area of every surface of this cube, so we have one here, two, three, four in the back, five over here, and six on the bottom, right? There's six sides, so if I took the area of this cube um, and multiplied it by six, right, I would get the surface area, whereas the volume is how much stuff we can actually fit in here, right? And the formula for volume is length times width times height, so five times five times five, as opposed to 25 times plus 25, plus 25, plus 25, plus 25, plus 25, okay? Surface area versus volume, right? How much area there is around an object versus how much stuff can fit in it, all right? So this surface area to volume is exactly what we're talking about um, when we looked at, like, Alaska versus Rhode Island, okay? Imagine that we had this cube right here, which is really, really big compared to this small cube, right? In this big cube, if we wanted, which pretend is a cell, right? If we wanted to get one little piece of food here, right, and move it all the way into the middle of this three-dimensional cube, that'd be a lot further than maybe having this one little cube, which is only one unit instead of five, right, and moving into the middle, okay? Uh, and again, this goes back to the surface area to volume ratio, is that in the end, we want a high surface area to volume ratio, okay? We want a lot of surface area to volume so that we can get stuff into a cell. Uh, we'll talk more about this, but just know that that exchanging materials comes back to the surface area to volume ratio. All right, so let's talk about the division of the cell. So right here we have a picture uh, of a cell actually dividing, going through mitosis, right? We can see that 
Uh, there's pretty much two new cell membranes here. We can see some microfilaments in here uh, helping with the cell division. What looks like two nuclei in here, right? All the chromosomes are condensed. And they're almost split, okay? So when we have the cell division, we're having two cells dividing into one, okay? Uh, and the reason we need to do this is, like we said, cells can't get infinitely break big for those two reasons, right? For information overload, for exchanging materials. So when a cell divides into new daughter cells, that process is called cell division, okay? Uh, before a cell divides, right, we need to make sure it makes copies of its DNA, right? And we said DNA, or deoxyribose nucleic acid, uh, is basically information for life, tells cells how to do things. Uh, and if we were to do cell division before we did that, each cell would only have one half of the DNA. Uh, and basically, both of those cells would die, right? Because they wouldn't have the information to live. So before cell division, right, the cell copies all of its DNA, right? It makes two copies so that each one can get one copy instead of a half. All right. Um, when a cell divides, right, this goes back to the surface area to volume ratio. Uh, the cell volume is reduced, so the volume goes down, right? The size of the cell goes down, but the surface area increases, right? The surface area to volume ratio increases. We have much more surface area or area touching the outside than volume. Okay. So let's talk about reproduction, right? Which is part of this process of cell division. We can have asexual reproduction, which is basically one parent, right? So when we have uh, asexual reproduction, we have one parent that basically splits into two, okay? Uh, a lot of different bacteria, prokaryotes do this. Some eukaryotes do asexual reproduction, um, where basically you have one parent split into two. It copies its DNA and cuts in half, okay? As we see here, we have one cell, and it copies its DNA. We have one copy, two copy, and it splits into two daughter cells, right? Same parent, same DNA, almost identical Right, both of these are pretty much identical to their parent cell. All right, and this is different than sexual reproduction, where we have two parents, okay, that are going to make one offspring or one daughter cell. Uh, and believe it or not, this is how babies are born. Right, we have basically there's two sex cells, so we have a female, which is usually the egg, and then a male, which is a sperm. Right, and they come together to make one organism. So what's important with sexual reproduction is that each parent is only giving one half the DNA, okay? Because if both parents gave all their DNA, there'd be way too much DNA. And every time we have a new baby, we get more and more DNA, and eventually it'd be too much, your cell wouldn't know what to do with it, and it wouldn't die, all right? So each, in sexual reproduction, each parent only gives half the DNA. Um, so let's compare the two of them, right? So asexual reproduction, uh, the offspring are identical, right? It makes one copy, splits into two. Uh, this is really usually beneficial for things like bacteria um, or some more simpler organisms because it's really fast and you can make a lot of offspring, right? And that's like when we've talked before about exponential growth curves, right? This is usually asexual reproduction because you just start cranking them out. Boom, 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 boom. Uh, like mold on your bread, right? Starts out slow and increases really quickly because it's doing asexual reproduction. Uh, but again, they're identical because it's an exact copy. This differs than sexual reproduction uh, which has very diverse offspring, okay? And the reason is, like we said, is that each parent only gives one half the DNA. So maybe, right, if we have four sets of DNA, one from a mom and one from a dad, right, maybe the mom on one baby will give this piece and dad will give this piece, right? But on the next baby, mom will give this piece of DNA, DNA dad will give this piece, all right? So we can really switch it up what happens. And that's why when you look around you, you see such diversity in human offspring. Every, even your, between your brothers and sisters, you look very different, even though you came from the same parents. All right? And that has to do with that sexual reproduction uh, and really the switching up of what genes you're getting when you're born. Okay, And the reason this is really important is that genetic diversity helps ensure survival of species when environments change. Right, And this is basically what starts the process we've talked about called evolution, right? If everything was the same, right? Let's think about our monoculture farms that we talked about, for example. If you had a farm of just carrots, but a really bad carrot disease came around, all the carrots are gonna die, right? Whereas if you spice it up and you have some different things out there, right? Some of your vegetables are gonna die. Same thing when it comes to organisms and their genetics, okay? We're gonna talk about examples of this, but some genes uh, might be more beneficial to live with than other genes. Cool. 
All right, so that was it. Ooh, all my words got blacked out, right? But make sure you review, as always. Um, go back, rewatch the video, make sure you have good notes, be ready for a little quiz. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to email me, or you could always tweet at me, okay? Peace out, kids. Have a good one.